This man was named Gilbert. He was sitting in the judgment seat. He was sentenced to 18 months in prison for committing check fraud. He is then thrown in prison by the judge. However, after six months, he escaped from prison and crossed the Canadian border. During his escape, he tried to find work so he could survive in a foreign land. With reckless capital, he tries to apply for a job as an ice cream seller who happens to have a vacancy. But he has to fill out a form and attach an identity card. He realized that he didn't have an identity card. At the same time, he saw a beggar who was at the end of the road not far from his current position. He approached the beggar. He then bought the identity card that the beggar had. Finally, Gilbert got an ID card for $22. It had Robert's name on it. He then gave the business card to the ice cream seller and filled out several forms. From then on, Gilbert was known as Robert. In the evening, he went to a church that provided rooms for tourists. After several times knocking on the door, finally the door was opened by a woman named Andrea. She allowed him to spend the night there. The next day, he started selling ice cream. With great enthusiasm he sold the ice cream. The income he gets from selling ice cream is quite a lot. However, the goddess Fortuna is not on his side, because the ice cream company where he works has gone bankrupt, causing him to lose his job. After officially becoming unemployed, he went to a bar to cool off. The bar turns out to be owned by a gangster and lawn shark named Tommy. Tommy is currently also a target for the police. However, because the police did not have sufficient evidence, the police had a little difficulty in arresting him. When Gilbert was about to leave the bar, he ran into a notorious police officer. The cop's name was Snides. He is in the bar to spy on Tommy who has been his target all along. Coming home from the bar, he saw that Andrea had closed the door of the church and would not allow him to enter there, because it was after 11 p.m. However, he did not intend to enter the church there but instead asked Andrea out on a date. Eight months later, Gilbert has moved in with Andrea. When he returned home, he suddenly did not see Andrea. Unintentionally, he read a newspaper that reported about the efforts of the American government to pursue him. He was a bit worried about that, he would then talk about it with Andrea. While Andrea was in the toilet, her face looked worried and happy after seeing the test results on her hand which showed that she was pregnant. At night, Andrea wanted to tell the happy news. However, she was forced to back down after hearing her husband plans to go out of town for a few days. He said he was on business. With a heavy heart, she allowed him. When Gilbert arrived in Vancouver, it turned out that his departure was only to trick the police who were chasing him, as well as looking for work while he was there. He has been in and out of the building several times to apply for jobs. However, no one accepted him. In the midst of despair, he saw a car that was taking money from the bank. From there, the beginning of his evil intentions began to blossom, especially after he called Andrea and got the news that his wife was pregnant. Without thinking much, Gilbert entered the bank and observed the entire room, from the location of the CCTV, security guards, and so on. Then he went into a shop. He borrowed some clothes on the pretext that he was an actor who was going to audition for a film. He also said that after the event was over, he would return it. After getting the clothes, it turns out that Gilbert didn't audition. Instead, he went back into the bank and disguised himself as a security guard. He went to the bank manager and inquired in detail about the bank's security and checked the CCTV server room. After he had enough information, he then called several employees by disguising his voice. He also dismissed several security guards who were on duty. Not only that, he also attended training on how to make silicon skin and how to use it. Their Gilbert stole a silicon nose. Long story short, the awaited moment has arrived. He had disguised himself in such a way. Determined, he carried out his first robbery at the Royal Estate Bank. He went straight to the table of the teller named Jessica. He handed a piece of paper that said, Don't scream. He demanded that Jessica hand over all the money in the drawer. He also seemed to be pointing a gun that was behind his coat pocket. With full of fear, Jessica handed over all the money in the drawer of the table. But the problem is, Gilbert did not carry a pocket to keep the money he robbed. Because he kept threatening her, Jessica then put it in the small purse she had. When Jessica put the money in, Gilbert's disguise was almost blown due to the slightly peeling silicone nose he was wearing. He rushed to put it back. After finishing his act, he then returned the clothes he had borrowed and he went to the bathroom to change. There, he dismantled the money from the robbery and moved it into a suitcase. He then rushed to the airport. Arriving at the airport, he encountered a new problem, because he has to go through an x-ray machine and the money in his suitcase will be read by airport officials. Therefore, he immediately moved some of the money into his underwear and returned to the inspection area. But unexpectedly, every domestic flight was not x-ray checked on the luggage. After arrive at the arrivals terminal, Andrea was waiting for him. They then headed to the new house that had been bought by Gilbert earlier. He again lied to his wife about his job so far. He claims to run the family business so he can choose a new home for them to live in after marriage. In a different place, the police are interrogating victims of robbery. Suddenly a detective named Hoffman approached him. Hoffman said there had been a robbery by gangster Tommy. Snides confronts the police commander for permission to arrest Tommy. However, commanders cannot fund the operations they carry out. 
With a heavy heart, they then went on a mission to catch Tommy. On the other hand, Gilbert needed substantial capital to carry out even bigger robberies. He then goes to Tommy's place to convince Tommy. Gilbert pointed to a bank across the street. He will be robbing that bank in three minutes. If he could do that, he would borrow $10,000 and pay it back at 30% interest for five months. Not waiting long, he went to the bank in question. He went into the portable toilet. Moments later, he disguised himself as a construction worker and entered the bank. Tommy kept looking at his watch. One of the members began to doubt Gilbert. Finally, he had returned from the back door with some money. Even though he was 12 seconds late, Tommy still tolerated him and impressed him with Gilbert's skill. His robbery action is getting crazier. He robbed several banks in the same way. By disguising himself in such a way and giving a piece of paper that reads threats in various languages. In carrying out his actions, he always takes domestic airplanes to move from one city to another. From there, Gilbert became better known as the Flying Bandit. Until that time, he had robbed 36 banks. The results of his robbery he used to buy cars and other luxury items, and some of the rest of the proceeds of his robbery, he kept in a safe. Besides that, he also had the opportunity to join the flight club of the rich. When he paid off his debt to Tommy, he suddenly got an offer to commit an even crazier robbery, namely robbing a jewelry store. On the other hand, Snide's operation had been approved by his commanding officer. They will get a stream of funds for the operation to catch the most dangerous gangster leader in Canada, Tommy. Snide's named this operation Project Cafe. If the arrest operation is successful, all members will be given a promotion. Snides and the rest of his team keep tabs on Tommy's movements and anyone else who has dealings with Tommy. Two of his right-hand men were the first targets they would catch first, namely Bishop and Dave. Likewise with Gilbert who entered into police surveillance, but the police still have no information about who Gilbert really is. On the other hand, Gilbert was surprised by Andrea who was in the room. Seeing Gilbert's pile of money scattered on the bed, she asked where that much money came from. Here, he is telling the truth if he got all the money from robbing the bank. However, Andrea asked Gilbert to prove it if he only robbed a bank without hurting anyone, so that in the morning, he again robbed a bank and was witnessed by his wife. There, Andrea was fascinated by Gilbert's skills when robbing, but she looks worried about Gilbert's condition. A few moments later, he returned to meet her and bring the loot. When they were at home, she asked him to promise several things, including he not to get caught. And someday, Gilbert will have to retire from his job. On the other hand, around Tommy's bar, Snides can be seen lurking from a distance. A moment later, Gilbert came there to meet Tommy. Hoffman was suspicious of the car's license plate, because the car was registered in Andrea's name, although neither detective knew Gilbert at all. Meanwhile in the bar, Tommy and Gilbert are again planning to rob a jewelry store. Tommy orders Bishop to accompany Gilbert when he robs later. Not long after Gilbert went to the toilet, Snides immediately followed him there. He also warned Tommy that sooner or later an arrest warrant would be issued for him. While waiting for Gilbert to emerge from the toilet cubicle, Snides washed his hands. Snides was suspicious of Gilbert, because he still had traces of silicone glue on his face and that convinced him even more that the two people they had seen before were the same person. They then phoned all the costume shops that stocked the disguises. That night, while Snides was resting, he suddenly received an emergency call from the police station. The police have caught a drunk driving a car, it turns out that the man is Dave, Tommy's right-hand man. Dave told everything, who is the mysterious man? He was Gilbert who changed his identity to Robert, and already known as the Flying Bandit. He also said that Gilbert would commit an even bigger robbery. For the information he got, Snides immediately headed for the location of the robbery. He was getting more and more excited about investigating this case, starting from interrogating the shopkeeper who provided used clothes that Gilbert had borrowed, to reporting to the local police that there would be a robbery in the city in the near future. He asked for help in placing several police officers to oversee all the banks in the city. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Gilbert and Bishop will carry out the action and now they have disguised themselves as camera technicians. He didn't notice that outside the building several policemen were stalking his movements. Gilbert asked the shopkeeper to put all the jewelry in a bag. Bishop kept watched by the door, and there he saw Snides moving towards the shop. Then Gilbert and Bishop immediately saved themselves from the police chase. However, Bishop's knife remains there, and that was used as evidence by the police. The police continued to chase them, fortunately the uniforms they were wearing were also worn by several other people which made the police quite confused. Snides was no less cunning, he set off the fire alarm, so that all the mall visitors panicked. He ordered his men to chase the two guys who didn't run at all and that's right, Cindy's looked at Gilbert and Bishop's position, he immediately chased after them. Gilbert continued running towards the exit at the rear. Snides lost them too. Once it was safe, Gilbert called Andrea to hurry up and pack up as they would be leaving there soon, and Bishop would be back at Tommy's bar. When he got home, he saw Andrea had her water break. He immediately took his wife to the hospital. Moments later, their child was safely born. 
On the other hand, Gilbert's house has been raided by the police. However, the condition of the house is uninhabited. Unbeknownst to the police, Gilbert had taken refuge somewhere. With Tommy's help, he can own a house again. Police have investigated possession of a firearm that was left in the jewelry shop. Currently, Gilbert feels quite safe in his new home because no one knows where he lives. Long story short, Gilbert spent day by day raising his child, and Andrea is pregnant with their second child. Suddenly Tommy came to see him. They talk on the terrace of the house, ask about each other's news. Tommy also asked about Gilbert's next plans. He persuades Gilbert to get him back to robbing. However, Gilbert will spend his old age with his family. After Tommy left there, Gilbert immediately noticed his dwindling savings in the safe. It led him to plan to rob again, for the last. However, Andrea disapproved of the plan. The next day, while Andrea was still asleep, without the slightest doubt, he left Andrea and his child. He also wrote a letter to Andrea. The letter was inscribed with the location where he was currently. After Andrea woke up, she didn't realize that her husband had left the house. She then heard the phone ring many times. She picked up the phone and saw it was from Snides asking where her husband was. Andrea said that Gilbert was not home. Next, they called all the airports one by one but to no avail. Then accidentally, Snides read an advertisement in a newspaper if one of the domestic airlines had escaped his watch. His team then rushed to the destination city of the airline's flight route. In a different place, in a hotel room, Gilbert was seen preparing his plan. However, he suddenly got a call from Andrea. He lied again about his plans. He just asked her to pick him up at the airport at 5 p.m. Long story short, he returned to carrying out the action as well as the robbery he had done before, which he did perfectly. After his suitcase was full of money, he left the bank. After changing his clothes, he made an emergency call if there had been a robbery at the bank. Unexpectedly, several people wore the same clothes as Gilbert when they robbed the bank. This led to the wrong arrest by the police. He took advantage of this condition to escape. When he was looking for a taxi, he saw a policeman interrogating a victim of a wrongful arrest. The man said that he was only given clothes. Gilbert was confused. Why no taxi passed there? It turned out that all the taxis had been diverted to another street. Next, Gilbert spotted a car for sale. Without thinking, he bought the car and ran away from there. At the same time, Snides had just arrived at the scene of the robbery and showed everyone a photo of Gilbert. One of the police said that he saw the man in the photo fleeing in a car. Finally, Gilbert had arrived at the airport. However, after he got on the plane, the airport had information about Gilbert being on the wanted list. The airport contacted Snides. Snides initially asked to abort Gilbert's flight, but Hoffman suggested letting him go and catching him when he landed. When agreeing to the proposal, Snides and Hoffman immediately flew by helicopter. After Gilbert's arrive at arrival at the airport, Andrea had picked him up there, but at the same time, police cars had surrounded him. Gilbert was arrested right in front of his wife and child. At the police station, he is questioned by Snides. Andrea was also summoned to speak to Gilbert. She is disappointed with him because he hasn't told her his real name so far. Tommy also came to see him. Tommy also said that he had told the police where Gilbert had lived all this time. He was found guilty of committing robbery with a firearm and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. And the movie's end.